it's Laura from Doggy You, and today we're going to be talking about moving with your dog. So I had a request come in from a client from way back who are moving across the country with their dog and they want to know how to handle the move to reduce stress. One of the things that we know about moving is it's really stressful for humans, but it's also stressful for your dog. So today we're going to go over a complete how-to guide to move with your dog, starting with what to do prior to the move, what to do during the move, and then finally what to do once you get to your new home. So let's get started. So like I said in the intro, I've moved a lot. Six different houses, different living situations, apartments, taking care of my grandma, having to adjust my dogs to being with a new person in the house, all of that, as well as lived in the van, as well as lived in, I don't know, probably thousands of hotel rooms during my career. So I have a lot of experience with moving dogs around. Also, as a placement specialist for guide dogs, I also move new dogs into new homes with new people once a month or so. So I have a lot of tips on how to, how to help your dog adjust to those situations as smoothly as possible. So let's start with changes. Any changes that you're going to make in your dog's lifestyle, we want to make them three to six months prior to the move if possible. So that means if you're going to, say, change your dog's food, I don't want you changing your dog's food right when you move to this new house. We want to try and get that taken care of three to six months prior to your move. Also, if their living situation is going to be different, so say you're going from 20 acres of wide open space where your dog is free roaming and they've never seen a leash to moving into a big city. It's time to do your leash training now so that your dog is used to going on leashed walks and slowly progress them to being in busier and busier area areas prior to the move. Also, if you're planning on, you know, at this new house, the dogs aren't going to be allowed on the couch or on the bed, gasp. Uh, then I want then I want you to start making that change prior to the move so that's already part of their routine. Any obedience classes that you can do prior to, so maybe you've been slacking a little bit on your dog's obedience, getting those done prior to your move will be helpful in your overall stress level. So doing some training beforehand can be really helpful. Logistics. So let's start with updating your dog's tags. You should have new tags printed with your current phone number as well as the address that you're going to so that you don't have to handle that right when you move. And if for some reason something bad happens and your dog gets lost, they have current tags. While you're getting your tags updated, make sure if your dog is microchipped that you're also updating their microchip. And since you're going to be moving to a new location, Prior to the move is the time to transfer your dog's vet records to that new location, as well as look up your closest emergency vet. So if you get there and something happens, you have a place you already know where to go and you're reducing your own stress about your dog's veterinary care. As far as moving logistics go, I recommend that you drive if possible. While you can fly a pet cargo under a plane, it does add another level of stress both for your dog and for you. And while some dogs might be okay with it, many won't, and you're gonna have a less stressful time for your dog if you're able to drive them from point A to point B if you're doing a longer cross-country move. So if you're driving someplace with your dog and you're worried about them being a flight risk if they slip their collar, especially in a new environment, now is the time to plan for a safe trip. So what that means for me is using a two-level system. I'm either going to use a multifunction leash that's going to attach to both the dog's collar and their harness, or put a safety between a collar and a harness so that I always have two points of connection with my dog. This works really well. Um, you know, we transport dogs sometimes for the rescue that I've, you know, volunteered for. And having a two tether system is a really good idea to keep your dog safe when you're moving about the country. Crate training. I am a huge proponent of crate training. Here's why. My dogs know that their crate is a safe, wonderful place to be. It's the reason that yesterday when we went kayaking and we weren't bringing the dogs along, I could throw my crates in my friend's house, put the dogs in the crates, give them a Kong, and they rested happily for the couple hours that we were gone. It's also the reason that I can go into any hotel room, put the crate in the room, and the dog's like, ah, home. This is my safe spot. So if you haven't crate trained your dog yet, now is the time. Not to mention that traveling with your dog in a crate in a car is the safest way to transport your dog in the event of an accident where they're less likely to become a projectile and go through your windshield or to lose them. So crate training can be really helpful and all you need to do in your new space is bring that crate in with their familiar smells, put it in the room they're going to be in and they're going to be like, oh, I recognize this. This is my spot. Here's where all the good things happen. I love my crate. That's what we're looking for. Now, if your dog isn't crate trained yet, now is the time to start. 
at least three to six months prior to the trip. And then if they aren't transported using a crate in the car, now is a good time to put the crate in the car and practice having them ride around in that crate. On top of the fact that when you're packing, having a crate instead of just a loose dog is so much more helpful because you can contain them, keep them safe from the other stuff. If something falls, they're not gonna get hit with it because they're contained in the crate and you can pack around them. You just have to make sure that they have proper ventilation. Let's also talk about calming aids. So if your dog gets very sick in the car or it has trouble with long car rides, now is the time to go to your vet and talk to them about what they can do to help you with that transition. Any type of medication that they may or may not prescribe, I'm not a vet, so talk to them. Uh, you want to test out at least a couple times prior to going on your trip to make sure that your dog doesn't have any negative reactions. You can also find a lot of stuff online or in the pet stores that can help kind of just add a little bit of calm to your dog's life. So dog appeasing pheromone, DAP, is one that is really good for um, just spraying on the collar or they have different collars that you can put on the dog um, or diffusers that you could put the diffuser in your house put the collar on during the ride and then bring it to the new house so that it's all helping with the dog. I also use things like Box Rescue Remedy, which is a really good one, Composure or CBD. But you wanna try each one of these things out separately, see if it has the effect you're looking for for your dog um, and then practice using it prior so that we're not associating the stress with the additive of the box rescue remedy or whatever it is that you're using. I'll make sure to link all those products down below so that you can check them out and see what might be appropriate for your dog. Again, talk to your vet about what they think would be best to help your dogs with the stressful transition. So let's talk about the actual moving of the things, bringing the boxes into the home. You wanna try and bring the boxes in at least two weeks prior to your move. Some dogs get really anxious when you change their environment or even when you take a suitcase out. So you wanna bring those boxes in and play games around them, put packing tape on the floor, let the dogs know that there's nothing crazy going on here, that there's nothing to be afraid of with these boxes and that good stuff happens when the boxes appear. Another tip is to make sure those boxes are taped up tight or in an area that's maybe gated off that your dog can't get to. When you start packing your kitchen items or other things that might have fun scents to them, it might encourage your dog to go into those boxes and we don't wanna have any emergencies from ingesting anything uh, that they shouldn't because it's already been packed. So keep those boxes behind a closed gate and also keep a section of your house packing free. So you wanna have a safe space for your dog to go that's hopefully not have a ton of foot traffic. So maybe it's, uh, you know, you have a room that your dog usually hangs out in or your bedroom, but some place that you can keep kind of moving free so that your dog can go to that stress-free place when you move and you can give them a puzzle toy or a Kong in there and they can relax while you're scurrying around the house getting last minute things packed. Let's also talk about your own stress levels. A lot of dogs will feed off of your energy. So you wanna try and remain calm around your dog. Whether that means going out for some extra walks so that you can calm down, or if you need to have you know, some boisterous conversations about the move, have those away from the dog so that they feel as little stress from you as possible. Next, let's talk about exercise and routine. We want to start with trying to keep your dog's routine as stable as possible. Now, when you're going to move, you tend to spend all of your free time packing and doing stuff that you need to do for the move. So whether that means you need to exercise your dog first thing in the morning to make sure that it gets done, or you need to hire a dog walker to get them out extra or send them to daycare a couple extra days if you already use a daycare, we want to make sure that your dog is well exercised, which can reduce their stress and yours if you go along with them, and that will keep them more relax during the move. We also want to keep them mentally exercised. So being able to give them some Kongs, some puzzle toys, things where they can really chew and work out those feelings on an object will be helpful in keeping them as calm as possible during the move. So let's talk about the day of the move. If you're moving locally, it can be really helpful to have a trusted friend or family member come and take your dog for an overnight so that you have two full days to make that transition, get your stuff loaded, and get it into the new house. This is going to reduce your stress and also reduce any risk of your dog potentially getting out or running away during the move. Your friend can exercise the dog, and then when they bring them back the next day, you are able to really focus on your dog and helping them make that transition. However, a lot of people don't move locally, so they need to move across country. In that case, I would try to either hire a dog walker or have a friend come over or even use a daycare that you've been using prior to give your dog a break from the moving part, have them hang out with someone else during the day, and then once you're ready to go, collect your dog and just do the move. They'll already be tired from playing and exercising all day, so it'll make the car ride a little bit easier for them. 
If you're going to a new location and you have friends and family at that location that your dog already knows, you can also have them come over and take your dog for a walk while you start unpacking. Again, we're just trying to remove the dog during the most stressful time so that they're not feeling all the stress that you're feeling and seeing all those boxes come in and out and potentially loud things and things that can make an already anxious dog more anxious. So we're trying to separate them from that if possible, if they already have established routine with somebody else that they trust and enjoy spending time with. As far as the driving portion of your trip goes, if you're going to be driving more than four hours to your new destination, make sure you've planned the trip prior and have lots of places to stop with your dog to be able to let them out, have a little walk and a potty break. If it's gonna be a really long trip, make sure you've also booked a dog-friendly hotel if that's how you're going to move around the country. If you need more tips on how to actually make that drive, especially a longer one with your dog, check out my video on road tripping with your dog. I'll put it up here somewhere. Uh, that has a bunch of helpful tips on how to handle a long drive with a dog. All right, so let's talk about your new home. Before you ever let your dog out of the car, the first thing that you need to do for safety is go into the new place you're living and check all the areas for things that are potentially hazardous to your dog. So if it's new construction, make sure there's no nails sticking out of the floor. Uh, it's, it's a house you've maybe never been to before. Check if there's rat poison hanging around or anything that might be dangerous to your dog. You want to do a thorough sweep of the house. And if there's any areas that you haven't swept, to make sure that they're safe, make sure you gate it off and do not allow your dog in until you can verify their safety. Once you get to your new home, if your dog is comfortable in a crate in the car and the weather's okay for it, and you don't have a friend that can come and take your dog for the day, I highly recommend leaving them in the car with the crate and something to chew on while you go in, verify the safety of the house and move your initial items in. It's a big risk to put a new dog in a home where you're going to be leaving the door open because they can run away and become confused. So we wanna make sure their safety is of utmost importance. I don't love the idea of putting a dog into a new house in a place they haven't been and then you're constantly leaving the house. I don't think it sets them up for success. So if you do need to put them in the house and not in the car, pick a back room area, put their crate in it that they already know, some of their toys and a, a food puzzle toy for them to hang out with. The other great thing about leaving your dog in the crate in the car for the time being is you can go set up the house for fun. So what you can do is drop toys and foods all over the areas that your dog is going to be in so that they run into the house and automatically create this positive association with it as they go around searching for all the little treasures that you've left for them. Once you do let them in the house, I recommend you gate off an area for them to start in. Some dogs do fine with releasing them into the full house and letting them explore, but others are gonna feel more comfortable if you slowly build to the full size of the house. So for instance, if there's a downstairs and an upstairs, maybe you gate off so that the dog is only downstairs for the time being, gets to explore that area, and then the next day they explore the upper area. This works well for anxious dogs, but you know your dog best, so do what makes sense for them. As you're getting adjusted to your new home, one helpful thing that you can do is kind of dull the outside environment. And to do that, I recommend either investing in a sound machine or using a high powered fan that's just kind of kind of help the dog tune out some of those new noises. This is an especially helpful tip for anxious dogs or dogs that tend to be reactive. If we can dull some of the environment for the first couple of days, we can keep them a little bit more stress free so that they're not running around listening to every little sound that happens that's new to them. This is the same for visual stimulus. So if your dog tends to bark at neighbors or squirrels and they're already gonna be on high alert because they're in a new environment, I recommend closing the curtains and making sure they don't have a ton of visual access for the first couple days at least, so you can get them adjusted to the new environment prior to the new environment outside the house. And finally, don't neglect your dog's physical and mental exercise in their new space. You want to keep the routine that you had going up as much as possible. So buy some extra special chews for those times that you need to just put the dog in the crate with something to do. And always remember to exercise your dog first. Get up in the morning before you're overwhelmed by all the stuff you have to unpack and go for a nice long walk with your dog exploring your new environment. The dog will come home tired and ready to chill out and you'll be ready to do all of the moving stuff that you need to take care of during the day. And finally, make sure you're practicing patience and calmness with your dog. This transition can be tough on some dogs and you might find that they're more clingy or whiny or barky or they may regress behaviorally. Stay the course, be consistent with them and have lots of patience while they start adjusting to their new environment. 
There's no way to eliminate all stress from a move, but with these tips, hopefully you can make your transition for your dog as smooth and comfortable as possible. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to support the channel, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash doggyu, where we do deep dives into different types of training, step-by-step -step video instruction, as well as a live monthly Q&A where you can get your questions about your dog answered. It's a community for people that are interested in training their pet dogs, their service dogs, and those who like to adventure and travel with your dogs. So check that out if it interests you. You guys have an awesome day and happy training. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video. Subscribe now and never miss an episode.